taken time out from his very busy schedule to be a week. Members of the uh, uh, private sector organizations, civil society groups, uh, and gentlemen, Bula Vinaka to you all. Uh, it gives me a great pleasure to warmly welcome you all to this very important forum, which uh, in fact probably started about two years ago, and I had um, implored on director and uh, peers, given the kinds of issues and complaints that used to come to ministry, I said that we need to undertake roundtable discussion, uh, primarily to ensure that all investors or potential investors have full information about uh, uh, environment, the legislations, expectations from us, and how we can work together. The idea is to facilitate investment, uh, growth, development without compromising on the environment. So I want to thank you all for coming here today. And I, uh, you need to understand where we come from. How we get uh, uh, how we get the authority and power is basically the legislations that we are um, custodian of, and that's the Environmental Management Act 2005, as well as uh, the uh, a few other uh, the two regulations uh, and the Endangered and Protected Species Act 2002, the Litter Act 2008, and the Ozone Depleting Substance Act 1998. So ladies and gentlemen, these legislations, we hope to protect our unique biodiversity and our endangered species, both on land and ocean, ensure that our natural environment remains intact and ecosystems are fully functioning, waste is managed, emissions are within acceptable environmental standards set out by the Department of Environment. So the entire uh, vision is to ensure that the state of environment that we were endowed with, the state of environment that, that was passed on to us by our forefathers, at least we must ensure that we leave the state of environment in this, this in the same manner uh, for our future generations. That's our responsibility. That's our obligation, and we must ensure that you know the the state of environment, the natural resources is is, is intact. There are times when we are really um, you know um, struggling to uh, see how we can uh, meet the demands of the stakeholders, the investors. Uh, with respect to uh, investment projects uh, when it could have an impact on their run and that's where we come in and walk you through. The idea is to walk you through, handhold, walk you through to ensure that uh, the, we don't breach any of the legislation which means that we um, look after our environment and resources, natural resources, but at the same time we uh, attract and we get you to make the investment and necessary investment. That is in national interest. Both is in national interest. Interest, national interest to ensure that we grow and develop it. We are in a development stage where we need to attract investment. We need to grow. We need to develop. We need to expand uh, uh, growth. I am the Minister of Agriculture as well. And when we want to expand agriculture in bring new land under agriculture production, I also hold the portfolio of environment and where we need to um, uh, clear this land and bring it under production. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's not an easy job, but we, once we have a common vision and once we understand the importance of environment and natural resource, there is ways of ensuring that we come up with a Pareto optimal uh, solution. A Pareto optimal solution is one where no one is worse off, but someone is better off investor is there and we allow the investor to make the investment but no one is made worse off. The, uh, the <coughs> custodian of natural resources, the, uh, the, the people of the country who look forward to uh, use the natural resources. Yesterday I was at an event in Nendi, uh, we were there as well, opening up a workshop with regard to uh, managing of uh, litter. People think that they are able to protect their own plot of land, the quota acre block or their residential area, they can dump rubbish anywhere. It's not acceptable. <coughs> Littering is not a localized issue. Someone litters down in a public park or near the mangrove will affect you in a number of ways. You need to ensure that not only you, but others too, conduct in a manner that is in public interest and national interest. In keeping Fiji clean, 
is in national interest, we must keep PPG clean. And therefore, we need everyone's, it's everyone's business, everyone's role to ensure that everyone understands and the common vision of keeping Fiji clean. Go to our neighboring countries, Samoa. Look at Samoa, how it is managing the environment. One of the cleanest countries within the Pacific region. They take a lot of pride, a lot of pride in keeping the community, the villages clean. clean. And unfortunately, you go now and talk to little kids and they'll tell you that litter, littering is bad. They will not throw rubbish, but it is the other generation that we are dealing with, we are struggling to deal with, to change their mindset. And I want to thank the education system and the previous leaders of the education system who ensured that our children get this you know, um, stock of knowledge about the uh, importance of clean environment. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, today, um, uh, during this roundtable me meeting, we hope to achieve uh, a number of objectives to increase our understanding and knowledge about Fiji's environmental laws, especially the requirement under the Environment Management Act 2005 and the two regulations, particularly the EIA process and waste management and recycling, to provide a space to discuss, communicate issues affecting both government and business stakeholders to strengthen our collaboration networking system. I understand that there are lapses on both sides, on us as well, probably. Uh, uh, or, or not responding to you on time, probably because uh, of the work culture and attitude which we need to change, or probably because there's a resource constraint, or both. And we are interrogating that, you know, even this morning, I had a discourse, uh, uh, um, uh, discussion with uh, PS and director, and I said that status quo is not an option, we cannot continue like this. And I get complaints nearly every day and also lapses on the other side as well. The investors and business sector thinks that you know, they can make you know, windfall gains, they can shortcut the process. That's not a separate, it will not happen and won't be allowed to happen. You need to understand where we come from. You need to understand that we uh, are the custodian of uh, the, 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 the legislations which gives us uh, the authority to ensure that the resources and environment is protected. But I'm convinced and I'm you know, uh, quite pleased to note that our staff understands that they are not an environment police. They are there to facilitate growth and development at the same time ensuring that no one breaches the legislation that we are studying on. So ladies and gentlemen, it is my hope that the deliberations today, you will be able to ask those questions you know, that, you know, you, that you kind of had doubts about. Seek those clarifications. Um, and uh, get those uh, questions uh, lingering in your mind sorted out so that, you know, once and for all, uh, you understand that this is a process. And ignorance is not, not a justifiable ex you know, excuse. You don't come and tell us later on, look, I didn't know about it. I didn't know about it. No, and I'm, I'm wanting to tell you that you come down and sit with us, you know, in the office and sit our office staff and get your doubts clarified so that, you know, later on you don't say that, you know, that you didn't know. And there are certain, certain uh, actions that are irreparable. And, and those things, really, we can't afford to do those. Some are reversible. You know, and OK, you know, we could do that. But some damages are basically irreversible. So I, again, I want to thank you for uh, taking out your time. I know that you know, in the business sector, every minute matters to you. Uh, so I you know, really appreciate you coming out. And I said, said to director, let's go out, do it in every town. Hot spots, you know, the tourism sector in particular, you know, let's go and do an industrial sector. Look at the amount of waste they are disposing, discharging, you know, in our waterways. You know, all, all those things, whether they are permit holders or not, whether they are, if, if they are permit holders, are they discharging uh, on the limit given on their permit? These are some of the things that, if you think that we are hard, no, not yet, not yet. We're going to go hard, you know, soon. I'm set to give me a database on all those who are permit holders, on all those who do not have permit, because they initially, at that particular point in time, their discharge was minimal and did not fall into the category where they needed a permit. That was 10 years ago, 15 years ago. We're coming, we're gonna get those. The delay is because I'm not able to get that spreadsheet. So look, I mean, you know, lucky I'm having three portfolios, so, so I'm gonna get more time on this, on environment, and there you go. So look, I mean, before that, I'm saying kere kere, kere kere, adhere, adhere to the, the processes 
regulations, the legislation. And don't say I didn't tell you. So thank you, thank you, Naka, and I do hope that you'll have a very fruitful discussion today. Thank you.